My name is Glenn O'Bear. I'm a PhD student and I'm studying a unique layering issue that occurs in golf course putting green soils as well as other engineered soils. Many golf course putting greens are built with a 12 inch layer of sand over a 4 inch layer of gravel. Um, so what this does is by layering small particles over large particles, we create a zone of preferential water retention in the sand just above the gravel. Uh, the reason this occurs is because with the smaller pore spaces in the sand, uh, the capillary forces exert a stronger force on the water than the force of gravity pulling down. And so the result is that the sand is usually persistently wet right above the gravel, and the gravel is, tends to stay persistently dry. At the interface of sand and gravel, layers of iron oxide can form and prevent water from draining out of the soil. These layers can form in less than five years, and they result in persistently wet anaerobic soils and a decline in turf grass density on the surface. We have seen these layers on over 30 golf courses across the USA, and they occur all over the world. In order to understand what is happening here, it is important to consider how iron behaves in the soil. Iron can exist as either reduced iron 2 or oxidized iron 3. The cemented layers are composed of oxidized iron 3. Iron 2 tends to be more soluble than iron 3. The form of iron in the soil is entirely dependent on two factors, soil pH and soil EH. Soil pH is relatively straightforward. It's the concentration of hydrogen atoms in the soil. Soil EH is more complicated. It is the redox potential, or the tendency of the soil to donate or accept electrons from atoms in that environment. The easiest way to understand these concepts is to look at this figure, which is called a pore bay diagram. Soil environments with low pH and low EH are more likely to contain iron too. If pH or EH increases, iron is more likely to become oxidized and exist as iron 3. These two factors, EH and pH, can explain why iron behaves as it does and why these layers form in golf putting greens. We expect iron to oxidize and form cemented layers at boundaries where low soil EH borders high soil EH or where low, low soil pH borders high soil pH. The goal of my PhD research is to describe uh, when and where these iron cemented layers form in golf course putting green soils. And so uh, this is a column study designed to investigate how soil EH and soil pH influence iron mobility. Um, so we have these columns here where we've simulated uh, golf course putting green root zones with 12 inches of sand over 4 inches of gravel. We have two different sand sources. We have a low pH sand from Florida and then we have a high pH sand from Wisconsin. We also have two different gravel sources. We have a low pH gravel from Minnesota and then we have a high pH limestone gravel from Nebraska. And so all of those, uh, those two sand sources and the two gravel sources are combined in a two by two factorial arrangement so there are four total combinations of those soils. And so we're gonna add uh, two different rates of, of ferrous sulfate to those columns and then we're gonna look at how iron moves through them, how it accumulates, and we'll take several measurements to track what is happening. This is called an air permeameter. It measures the soil's resistance to airflow. So what we do is we attach this rubber flange to the top of the column, and then this container is filled with water. Uh, so we place this can on top, and it actually traps a pocket of air inside. So as this can falls, the only place that that air can go is out through this hose and down into the soil. And I can track the rate at which this can falls uh, by looking at little notches on this rod here. And the rate of the can falling is directly related to the resistance to airflow in the soil. We are also using a portable X-ray fluorescence analyzer to measure iron concentration non-destructively through the wall of the columns. This will allow us to track how iron is moving or accumulating in the soil, almost in real time. We are extremely excited to use this methodology because nobody has ever done this before. After each addition of iron, we're collecting the leachate that comes out of these columns. So we can measure how much iron came out from the bottom. Um, we're collecting turf grass leaf tissue to measure how much iron was taken up by the, by the leaves. And then at the end of the study, we're going to cut open these columns and measure the iron concentration at different depths. So that's going to allow us to construct a mass balance. We know how much iron we put in, we know how much came out as leachate, how much the plant took up, and then how much accumulated at different depths in the soil. 
I'm also replicating these treatments inside of larger boxes where I've installed various sensors and probes. We're measuring soil moisture with these time domain reflectometry sensors. We're measuring soil EH with these platinum electrodes that we built custom. Uh, we're also using these microporous samplers to sample the soil solution and we can measure the pH and the iron concentration of the soil solution at different depths in the soil. So all this information put together will paint a picture of what is happening to iron in these soils. Stay tuned for updates on this experiment and others by visiting our website turf.unl.edu and check out our Twitter page at UNLTurf.